In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this storybook style axe in Blender. The modeling is pretty simple, and then we're going to use the grease pencil and some hand painted textures to get the final result. Normally, I make characters, but this same process can be used for props and weapons too. To start off, I always drag in a reference, and luckily, this concept art is drawn from the front angle, so that makes things easier. Now I can start making a simplified version of the axe. So in this case, the axe handle is a cylinder with eight vertices, and I just extrude this to match the shape of the handle. At this stage, you have to keep everything as low poly as possible. Even though I know that I want some of the details on the axe to be modeled, I start off with the simplest form and I can come back and modify it later. The head of the axe also starts off as a cylinder, and I can extrude out the back of the head to form the point, and then start modeling the front part of the axe. This is a little bit tricky because of the intricate design, and I know I want there to be actual holes in the model, so I need to model them. For the most part, I try to keep the topology as nice as possible, but in certain areas I have to add triangles to make the shapes work, and that's fine. When modeling, you always need to take into account what the model will be used for, as different use cases will call for different topology. Once the base shape of the axe head is done, I can come back and start modeling the details. You'll see me use the annotation tool to mark out the shape of the details on the head of the axe. This is something I do a lot, and it really helps with clarifying where things should be. If you hold D and left click, you'll draw annotations, and right click will erase. This can even be useful for just writing notes in your scene. So I'm just using the knife tool to cut the details on the head of the axe using the annotations as a guide. And from here, I can start connecting vertices together with J to form triangles or quads. I'm going to be using the subdivision modifier to smooth things out, so for that to work correctly, it's best practice to keep everything as quads, but some triangles should be fine. The last part to model is the rope around the handle, and for this, I can use curves. Curves are a special type of object in Blender that allow you to manipulate a curve, which is just a set of points, and you can procedurally add thickness and change the detail of the curve without having to model anything. All you have to worry about is the shape of the curve, and Blender will handle the rest. So for this, I use some curved circles and place them around the handle, making sure to give them some thickness, then I can just duplicate and rotate these to make the different sections of the handle. Using curves for something like this is so much easier than modeling it manually, because now at any point, if we decide we want more or less detail on the curves, we can change it. And if the shape doesn't work, then we can move the points of the curve. Curves are very powerful, and you'll see them a lot in anime style models for hair. Instead of modeling each strand of hair, you can just focus on placing curves and let Blender make the hair strands for you. This is now the low poly version of the model, but I want it to be a bit smoother so I can add the subdivision modifier, but this turns the model into a bit of a mess. The subdivision modifier tries to blend two faces together to smooth things out, but we want the edges of the axe head and other areas to be sharp, and we can do this using creases. This is another procedural operation in Blender that allows you to specify how much you want the faces to blend together when using the subdivision modifier. With an edge selected, you can press Shift E and move your mouse until the line turns pink, or just use the numpad. A value of zero will mean the faces blend evenly, but a crease of one means the faces don't blend, which will give us the sharp edge we want. So I can just go around the model creasing certain areas to keep them sharp, and this will still give us a smooth model, but we can keep those nice sharp edges. With the modeling done, now I can start the process of UV unwrapping. For those that don't know, UV unwrapping is a way of mapping a 2D texture onto a 3D model. We have our 3D object, and we want to try and lay it flat so that we can paint on it, so we need to cut up the model using seams. UV unwrapping is one of those daunting things when you start learning 3D modeling, because it's one of the more finicky things to deal with, as you have to go around the model and figure out where you want your seams to be. And if you've never done that before, then how do you figure it out? As an example, just look down at whatever clothes you're wearing, and you'll see seams. The seams are usually placed in areas that you don't want to be visible, so along the underside of the arm, and around the shoulder and armpit. Having a seam run down the center of the chest doesn't really make sense, but along the rib cage is a bit more hidden. This is the exact same logic to apply when UV unwrapping. Where can you hide the seams so that they won't be visible? And if you can't hide them, where would make the most sense? So you can separate different objects and split long objects like the axe handle along an inside seam, and for more intricate objects, hide seams where you can. You'll see I'm using a grid texture with letters and numbers to help me see what areas need to be fixed. Generally, if you can look at the model and read all the letters without any distortion, then your UVs are fine. We already have our nice UVs, but I want to make a second UV map, and this one is going to be projected from the camera view. We modeled the axe based on the image, so the projected UVs will fit perfectly over the image. Now in texture paint mode, I can use the clone brush and clone the texture from the projected UVs to the real UVs. This will allow us to keep our nice UV map, which will make texturing easier. After projecting the texture, we can get a rough idea of what the model will look like when it's finished, 
but we also need the outlines and I can make them with the grease pencil. I can just add the grease pencil scene line art object and straight away we'll see our outlines. We can make them a bit more hand drawn by adding the noise modifier to give it some randomness. If you want to learn more about the grease pencil, I have a full video explaining all the different ways you could get line art in Blender. With the outlines out of the way, we can start painting our final textures, and for that I'll be using Substance Painter. I have a drawing tablet which allows me to actually draw the textures using a pen, which makes texturing much easier. All I'm going to do here is paint over the lines from the original image, making them a bit cleaner. At this point, I just turn my brain off and follow the lines from the reference image. Something like this is nice and easy to do because the concept art already did the hard work for me, I'm just copying it. There are certain areas where I need to make creative decisions, but 90% of the work is already done. When the texture is finished, back in Blender I can just give this a basic material with the texture and the model is done. Making something like this might seem like magic to some people, but as you can see from the video it follows all of the usual steps like modeling, UV unwrapping, texturing, the only difference is the grease pencil outline and the material. So I hope you enjoyed the video, go check out more of Connor's work, the link's in the description, and thanks for watching.